Rams and Lions again, back at it for week one. It feels like we just did this crossover weeks ago. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to a crossover Thursday, week one edition. Locked on Lions, Matt Derry. Locked on Rams, the legend Travis Rogers as the Rams come back to Ford Field to take on the Lions for week one in a rematch of last year's first round playoff game. Uh, of course, Locked on Lions, Locked on Rams, a Thursday crossover brought to you by our friends at Price Picks. T. Raj, good to see you, my man. We're we're back at it again. You, the last crossover you did was uh, with me. Yeah, I, I was just thinking that the the last one of these was right before the NFC Wild Card game, right before Matthew Stafford's first return to uh, to Detroit, and the Rams kind of I think were the the hot team coming in. The Lions were, of course, had a great season last year. And uh, fast forward, here we are. This is the very next one, and it's almost exactly the same story again. <laughs> Crossover Thursday, as I said, brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use code all lowercase locked on NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. A lot to get into for this 820 Eastern, 520 Pacific Sunday night showdown on NBC. Of course, uh, thanks for uh, making us your first listen, checking us out. Locked on Lions and Locked on Rams, wherever you get your podcasts. And please subscribe to Locked on Rams on YouTube and Locked on Lions on YouTube as well. All right, Travis, let's start with you and the Rams. What's what's going on offensively uh, with this team? I know a lot of shuffling along the offensive line. And former Lion, Jonah Jackson at center. That's that's wild. Is he ready for this? Yeah, it, it, it's a really good question, Matt. I think that that's kind of the, the ultimate, for me, kind of indication that the Rams are having an offseason or, or a, a camp that is really unlike anything that we've seen under the Sean McVay era. This is something that is pretty new for Rams fans with Sean McVay as their head coach, which is a little uncertainty and a little bit of what, at least from the outside looking in, appears to be a little bit of confusion. That at the end of last season, the Rams made it very clear that Steve Avila was going to be their center, that he had a terrific rookie season as their left guard, played every single snap last year, was terrific. But I think all along the plan was to have them become or have him become their center. So the season ends, they make the announcement, he's their guy, they go and they get Jonah Jackson from Detroit. That was their big free agent expenditure. That's the guy that they went out and targeted to come in and be their left guard. And this was the plan working all the way through. Obviously, Jackson had an injury during camp so he wasn't able to work a ton in the way that maybe uh sean McVay would have liked but go back to the end of last week and all of a sudden it's like nope we're going back to the other way that avila is going back to guard that uh jackson is going to center a position that he has not played very often in the nfl uh and i think it caught a lot of people by su uh surprise so can put put those things together with your left tackle being suspended, your right tackle just now getting back from an injury that he suffered in camp. You've got an, an aging quarterback. You've got a, a running back with a, with an injury history. Uh, Pukunakua still isn't 100%, according to most people's reporting. So they got a lot of questions on the offensive side, but more than anything else is just the, the uncertainty of exactly what it's going to look like. What about Matthew Stafford? Uh, look, he's been there, done that already. Uh, I know mm -hmm. last year he was very taken aback by the amount of booze and just the hostility that was there. Now he's kind of saying, bring it on, bring it on. I know he's still a little bit ticked off at Kirby Joseph. There was that audio of him last year during the game when Joseph went low on Tyler Higby. He's still yeah. a little bit upset about that. Look, Stafford had a whale of a game last year. The issue was the Rams couldn't put it in, put it in the end zone. That was really the biggest thing. But how do you think he'll do Sunday? I think he'll be great, you know, assuming his health and assuming just a little bit of time. I mean, you know, as well as anybody, he's as good as you're going to find. If he has time and he has the ability to make decisions, he's going to score points. He's going to move the ball. The question is whether or not he has time, whether or not his blind side is, is adequately protected with a, a backup and Joe Nopum, who who's going to play over there. Uh, you know, this, this team will go as far as Matthew Stafford takes them. He is the most important player. He's the second most important player. He's the third, fourth, 10th, 15th most important player on this team. If, if he's healthy and good, the Rams will be good. If he's not, they will not. 
it, it, it's really simple with them because the defense is, I know we'll talk about that coming up in a little bit, but the defense is something that is very much in flux with the departure of Aaron Donald, uh, waiting to see whether Puka Nakua can repeat year two, whether or not Cooper Cup can get uh, healthy the way that he was a few seasons ago. But if if the engine isn't working, if Matthew Stafford isn't right, then all the rest of it is is really not all that important. Crossover Thursday, Matt and Travis locked on Lions, locked on Rams for the 820 game on Sunday night. Give us a minute on Blake Corum. Around here, saw him every every play he he made in college. He was unbelievable. How big of a weapon do you think he'll be? And I'm hearing some kick return stuff too, right? Yeah, but both of the Rams backs, Kyron Williams is going to be their initial punt returner. We'll see whether or not they actually do that or whether they just call fair catches or not. If they're just calling fair catches, I don't know why he'd be back there in the first place. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, Blake Corum, like you mentioned, will be their kick returner, at least at the beginning. I think everybody's kind of learning on the fly with those new kickoff rules and what sort of player you want back there. Uh, I, I think he's going to play. I think they drafted him to play and play often and play a lot. Uh, I think I know that more than anything because of the way that they used him in the preseason, which was not at all. That wow. if, if if you use if you're used in Sean McVay's system in the preseason, he's undecided on you. If you don't see the field, he has big plans for you. That's kind of been the rule of thumb with Sean McVay in the preseason, and he did not touch the field during the preseason. The the, the reviews from him through camp and joint workouts were raved. So I think I think Corum is not only going to get to play for a rookie. I think he's going to get to play a lot, especially considering Kyron Williams' history with injuries his first two years in the league. It's going to be weird watching the Rams and not see Aaron Donald, Travis. What yeah. do, what does that mean for this defense? Well, I, I think the biggest thing is is somebody's got to step into a leadership void. And with Ernest Jones being traded about five minutes ago, you know, right before the start of the regular season, he was the one that Aaron Donald anointed. He was the one that Les Snead anointed. He was the one that Sean McVay anointed as he's going to be the leader on this defense. He's going to be the heart and soul. He's the guy that's going to get everybody on the same page at the same time and do the things that are necessary to lead the other 10 guys out there. He's gone. Who's up next? Your best your best defensive players next are either brand new to the team, guys like Tredavious White, or guys that have either zero or very little NFL experience. Jared Verse, I think people are really excited to see what he looks like. Again, didn't see him at all in the preseason. And then you've got some other guys like Kobe Turner and Byron Young who were really good last year as rookies. But to your point, Matt, with Aaron Donald, everybody looks pretty good. Aaron Donald draws a lot of attention. Aaron Donald is getting doubled and tripled regularly, which means other guys have opportunities to win their matchups. 99 is not here. I don't think he's coming back. Fingers crossed that he does. But those other guys are going to have a lot of questions to ask without the proverbial big brother at the park with him. Final thing, there's been some uh, uh, issues injury-wise in the secondary as well, right, with some of the safeties too? Yeah, you know, that's one of the few things I, I'm not particularly worried about, Matt, because they do have a lot of depth there. They've got a lot of versatility, guys that can play corner, guys that can play safety, guys that can play that star position. So while maybe it's not exactly what they wanted, I think uh, – Cameron Curl is going to get a look back there. Cam Kitchens is another guy that they drafted who played in the first preseason game. They took him out. He didn't play at all, which I think is a good indicator that he'll be there. John Johnson's a guy that's been around the team for a long time. They have a lot of options back there. Other, uh, Unlike some other places where they're a little thin, that's not one of them. Travis Rogers, Matt Derry with you. Locked on Lions, Locked on Rams. We talked about the Rams. Let's get into the Lions a little bit. I know Travis has some questions for me. We'll get into that coming up next. It's the Thursday crossover brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. And yes, Locked on Lions and the Locked on Rams brought to you by Prize Picks on this Thursday, folks. It's back. We are so glad that Prize Picks is back with us. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps, prize picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. It is that simple. Prize picks invented something very cool for this year, the flex play. Flex play, which means you can still cash out if your lineup isn't perfect. You can double your money even if one of your picks doesn't hit and puts their members first. So all withdrawals at prize picks are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit like yours, I can get my money in as quickly as 15 minutes. Players and stat types that I'm thinking about, who knows? 
Puka Nakua last year went for 180 yards against the Lions. Stafford threw for over 360. Want to do more than or less than with those guys? You can. Also, what about Jared Goff? Will he throw for more than or less than 300 yards? All of that is up to you at Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app today. Use the code Locked On NFL and get fifty dollars instantly when you play five bucks. That's it. That's code Locked On NFL on Prize Picks to get fifty bucks instantly when all you got to play is five bucks. You don't even need to win to receive that fifty dollar bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks run your game. Matt Derry, Locked on Lions. Travis Rogers, Locked on Rams. The Thursday crossover for the 820 Eastern, 520 Pacific, Sunday nighter, NBC at Ford Field once again. Travis, in looking at the Lions, you know, I think first off about the offense, I mean, it's crazy, but this team is back. Everybody's yeah. back other than Jonah Jackson, right? And I, I feel like, you know, I think everybody in town feels like, let's run it back with basically the same groups. You get a different kicker. There's some tweaks on defense. They feel better about the edge room. But as far as the offense goes, um, it's Jared Goff. It's that running game. It's that offensive line. Biggest issue has been wide receiver four. But other than that, people feel really good about this offense. And a hell damn Laporte. I think he was 100% in that playoff game against the Rams. Could make a big difference, I think, in this game on Sunday night. More Laporta against the last year, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Matt, I, I was I was curious to kind of have you take me through the people that we should be most worried about. Is Laporta at the top of the list? Is it St. Brown? Who who is the guy that is most likely to have a big day against the Rams? Well, that's the thing. I mean, I I think St. Brown, the seven catches, the Buck Ten last year played pretty well against the Rams. Again, both teams had had you know struggled to kind of get in the end zone in that game. But yes, when in doubt, it's always Amon Ross St. Brown. Um He's just been the security blanket. He's been so good. He got paid this summer and is making $30 million a year, but I don't think that's going to stop him from being motivated at all. That's the biggest thing with this group is, all right, they made the NFC Championship game last year. They were 30 minutes away from the Super Bowl, and they're hungry. They want to go back. No one's talking about expectations. No one's. No one has a big head or ego. Dan Campbell is like, we're just worried about, worried about L.A. We're focused on the Rams. And they added Kevin Zeitler to take Jonah Jackson's spot. He's at right guard. Glasgow moves from right guard to left guard. The, the tackles are back with Sewell and Decker, and, and Ragnow is healthy at center. So um, I like where this team is, uh, not even being a homer here. I think I think they're going to win less games than they won last year. They won 12 games. But I think the schedule is more difficult, and the Packers are better. Obviously, the Bears are better. Um, so I think the division will be difficult. But how it lines up offensively, everybody's just kind of even keeled and, and doing their thing. What what is the takeaway after of several years, but obviously the most successful year that he's had in Detroit with with Jared Goff? Because the, the Rams fans have a very complicated relationship with him, yeah. having seen him come in here and struggle at the beginning and then be very good. I mean, he took the Rams to a Super Bowl, a Super Bowl that they didn't win, but he was a big part of the reason that they got to where they got to. And then the opposite kind of happened. All of a sudden, it's like, yeah, we don't think he's good enough to go to where we need to go. We all know what happened after that, and he ends up in Detroit. And now he's on another team that's a favorite in the NFC, a team that's favored to win their division, that maybe is a favorite to go to the Super Bowl. What is the relationship that Detroit fans have with Goff? Well, it, it they love him. Uh, it, it, it You wouldn't believe it, Travis, and I'm sure you read about it, but you know, Red Wing games in the wintertime, Pistons games, Michigan State basketball, uh, at the big house for Michigan football, yeah. Jared Goff, Jared Goff chance this sat this past Saturday <laughs> in Michigan, chance of ch and it all started about two hours. I was there at Ford Field. It was two hours before that Lions Rams game where everybody was out for blood, and it wasn't a hatred on Stafford. It's just that they wanted to beat him. Sure, and the Goff chance because Matthew was so popular, but Jared had led this team to their first division title, and they wanted to show him some love. So these chants went on. They go on at Tigers games this summer. Just out of nowhere, randomly, Jared Goff chance uh, at the draft. So it's amazing how they and he got paid. And you're right, Rams fans got to be thinking, wait a minute, he just got fifty two million dollars a year. But for the last two years, he's carried this team with just his poise, his leadership, and uh, he's done a great job. Is he a dynamic quarterback? Is all of a sudden is he running? No, but he's very very accurate. He's got the horses, and the offensive coordinator and him, Ben Johnson and, and Jared, have such an unbelievable relationship that. They're all back. Ben Johnson's back as OC. Mark Brunel's back at quarterbacks coach. So there's that 
you know, that familiarity there, there, there's that consistency and it's, and it's, and it's worked. He's played very, very well. What about on the other side? Obviously, Aiden Hutchinson is the one that Rams fans will be preoccupied with, especially with a, a makeshift offensive line. Some guys that have switched to new positions or back to older positions. You've got a backup left tackle. You've got a right tackle that maybe is slightly compromised with an ankle. Who else on the defensive side? Well, I think you bring up a great point. I think Hutchinson, you're right, will be kind of licking his chops. Like you said, a little banged up right tackle, Larry Jackson out, no bloom in. So that should be interesting. Um, they don't, I, I, they, they are expecting Marcus Davenport, one of their free agent signees, a one-year deal to step up and be that edge opposite of Hutchinson. Um, he's been healthy when healthy, he's good. He was good in Minnesota when he was healthy and in new Orleans, but when he's hurt and he's hurt a lot, he's a non-factor. So that's a guy to watch. I'm interested in seeing if DJ reader plays or not. Uh, they targeted week two to have him come back from quad surgery, but I think he's itching to go. And you put Reader in that middle with Aleem McNeil, that's the best ta D-tackle combo this city has seen since probably Indomitian Sue and, and Nick Fairley in 2014. The secondary is brand new. I mean, last year, Nakua just had his way yeah. with Cam Sutton and, and, and Kendall Vildor. Those guys are going, oh, Vildor's back. But Vildor went from quarter, cornerback two in December and January last year to cornerback six now. He's basically the last guy. They drafted Terry on Arnold and Ennis Rakestraw. They signed Carlton Davis. They signed Amik Robertson. They've got Emmanuel Mosley back. They like Khalil Dorsey. So they've got more depth at corner than they had when you and I talked in January. That was something I was very concerned about was, hey, Sutton and, and Phil Dor against Nakua and Cooper Cup. Yeah. Now I feel a lot better with, with a, a veteran like Carlton Davis and a first-round pick in Terry on Arnold that, that could be really special at that position. Where are the opportunities for the Rams to move the ball? Well, that's the thing. I mean, the linebackers are improved. Jack Campbell, the second-year man, is a much better player than he was a year ago. You know, the the one thing with, with Higby still being out, I don't, you know, the Lions have always been susceptible to tight ends. You wonder about Stafford and play action, if that's going to be something. And I really think Blake Corum can make some people miss. I don't even think it's, oh, Corum against the Lions could be a great matchup. I just think Blake Corum's a really good football player. Yeah, I do too. And I think when he touches the ball, it's, it gets a little scary. And and so I I like that you now have a second back there uh, with Williams that I think could do some damage. But although I don't, I think it's going to still be kind of low scoring like it was last year, just because these offensive offenses haven't been out there in the preseason and done anything other than joint practice that the Lions have the Giants. But uh, yeah, I think I think Quorum would be somebody that the Lions definitely are thinking about this week. Yeah, we'll see where all this goes. Yeah, That's, yeah. no, we got lines. I, I think you're right, Matt. I think that one of the things that is you think of both of the, at least you know, me from my side from the Rams, and when I think of the Lions from the outside looking in, I think of them both as offensively oriented teams. But first week of the season, neither one of these teams really play their guys during the preseason. So I think it could be who makes fewer mistakes defensively than who lights it up. And I think we both need to bring this up. I mean, two rookie kickers who really oh, haven't done it before. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. Could, this could get interesting. How, how's how's this young man, how's this young kid from Stanford done so far? He looked great right up until he didn't. And, and <laughs> you know, it, it was one of those things. It was good. Action looked good. The the routine looked good. The the process, the everything about it was good, 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 good. And he missed a long field goal. Whatever. Not a big deal. And then there was a PAT missed. And then everything after that looked a little bit less than, I, you know, I, I go back to the Detroit game. I talk about this on Locked on Rams all the time. I talk about this on my radio show on ESPN LA all the time. The Rams, I believe, sacrificed an opportunity to maybe win that game against the Lions because they didn't trust their kicker. They had to try something at the end of the game where Sean McVay tried to convert a long third, and I believe it was 17 or something like yes. that. Yes. And, in, and he tried to get it all in one chunk because he didn't trust to get half or some of it or some run after catch because he knew he was never going to kick a field goal in that spot. And I think that, that all, all season long, whether it was Maher or Haversick, they never figured out that kicking position. I thought it was a huge priority for them going into the offseason. We'll see how Josh Cardi does. But um, until I see him make kicks where where it matters, I'm going to be waiting to see what it looks like. Yeah, Jake Bates is our <clears throat> guy, a rookie from the UFL, played actually for the Michigan Panthers, has never kicked, did never kick, never kicked in college. He hit some boomers, man, 50 and 60 yarders in the UFL, a couple of 55 yarders in preseason, but he's mm -hmm. missed some PATs. 
this could be an adventure for both teams. Uh, you end up, it could end up being Campbell and McVay just scrapping the kicker thing in the second half, and everybody's going for two, and everybody's <laughs> going for it on fourth and five, and that would make it fun. Uh, it, it no question definitely. about it. Definitely. No doubt. All right, when we come back, what's it going to take for the Rams to win? What's it going to take for the Lions to win? We'll get some keys. We'll do that next. Thursday crossover also brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Look, if you're not posting your job on LinkedIn and at LinkedIn Jobs, you're making a big mistake. LinkedIn is where everybody is for business. is isn't just a job board. It helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job. But might be open for the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. If you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. Post your job for free. It is very simple. Go to linkedin.com slash NFL. That's linkedin.com slash NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Matt Derry locked on Lions, Travis Rogers locked on Rams, Ford Field, the site Sunday night for game one. A little uh, crossover here on a Thursday. All right, Travis, what, what's it going to take for the for the Rams to win? What are some keys? What are some things you see that could get an, an LAW? I, I think they're going to have to get pressure on Jared Goff somehow, some way that doesn't include Aaron Donald. I, this is something that I've been, the everydayers that listen to Locked on Rams will hear me say this over and over and over again. It's exciting in one sense to see a defense without Aaron Donald for the first time in 10 years that he's been such a mainstay. He's been so good, but it's also terrifying to know that you're going into a new season without, never mind the best defensive player in the history of your team, maybe the greatest player in the history of your team. So, and the leadership that he brought, I think it's really interesting to see what it might look like with his absence and not just from a, does he get to the pro does he get to the quarterback? Does he fill his gap? It's, a lot more than just that. I think that's one part of it. The other part, and and this is super basic, but I believe that it's true. It's you know something that the the play by play voice of the Rams, uh, JB Long, always says. It's that CQI. It's the coach quarterback injury, and they have the coach. We know that Sean McVay knows what he's doing. We know that Matthew Stafford knows what he's doing. The question is, does the injuries that the Rams have had, especially on the offensive line? put pressure on Matthew Stafford, allow him not to make to make good decisions, allow him have to make quick decisions. Can they not run the ball? Can they not keep it uh, uh, Detroit honest as far as defending both the run and the pass? I think those are the two big things for me. Uh, and then, of course, we talked about it briefly a second ago. Can they kick field goals? And I'm not talking, can you kick 55-yard field goals? I'm talking, can you kick 42-yard field goals? Can you, can you feel <laughs> good about kicking something less than 45 yards and feel like you have three points in your back pocket? I think it changes the way Sean McVay calls plays. I think it changes the way the end of the game gets managed potentially. And whether or not they feel good with him, uh, I think we're going to get a pretty good look at it early. I, I think those are the three keys for me. Yeah, I, 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 I love the pressure thing. I, I think the fans, look, that that first home playoff game, the first time since 93 that Lions fans got to be in their own building for a playoff game, it's hard to replicate that. I mean, yeah. the, and this, these fans are hungry. It will be loud. Don't get me wrong. But that stadium and that vitriol for Stafford and, and just everything that went into last year was unbelievable. And I don't know if the Lion fans can do that. Now, they're going to be loud. And I think a big key is stay loud. Jonah Jackson, shotgun snaps with, with noise, hasn't, play, hasn't played center in the NFL in college. I think that can be a big advantage to the Lions. A couple of low snaps can throw everything off. So I think crowd is going to be a factor. That will help the Lions. Um, like you said, attacking and, and, and getting pressure on Goff. Same with the Lions. Who's that opposite edge? Is it James Houston? Is it Marcus Davenport? Josh Paschal? Who's going to uh, – Derek Barnes? Who's going to get off the edge? Tackle a little bit shaky for the Rams right now. I think uh, that's a definite key. And, uh, again, like you said, uh, you know, Jake Bates, can he make these kicks? Um Last year's game was close. Maher did his job for the most part for the Rams and, of course, Badgley for the Lions. But I think with offenses that have not worked a, lot, a ton here in August and September, and guys are going to be rusty. Uh, you know, I, I see this maybe coming down to the kicking game. And is Jake Bates that guy for the Lions? I think we're kind of uh, 
lockstep on a couple of these keys traffic. Yeah, it's, you know, it's funny. It's, 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 does your offensive line protect your quarterback? Does your quarterback make good decisions? And does your kicker make the kicks that they're supposed to make? Right. <laughs> that, it's pretty wild. That's basically what it is, right? Well, but but there won't be any center snap problems, I don't think, with Frank Rag now. This is no, I wouldn't think so. I and, wouldn't uh, think so. I, I do like the Rams. I and Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford in particular, that even in a loud environment, like you mentioned, last year in Detroit, I, I was talking with uh, my co-host DeMarco Farr, who was he does sidelines uh for the Rams radio broadcast. And he played in the NFL for a long time. He's a Super Bowl champion. You know, he, he mm -hmm. played in three Rose Bowls as a member of the Washington Huskies. So he he knows big venues with big moments. Said he'd never heard anything like he heard in that game in Detroit. So that they've been in that environment, that that those guys have been through big moments before. I think hopefully, uh, if I'm being optimistic, will serve them well. So you see the Ram? You going to pick the Rams? What do you think? I, my heart picks the Rams. My head tells me on the road against a very good team. And the Rams are breaking in a lot of new players on defense. They've got a makeshift offensive line. My brain is telling me that I think that the Lions have a pretty distinct advantage in this particular game. Uh, I never underestimate Sean McVay. I never underestimate Matthew Stafford. So I think the Rams will keep it close. I do not think that they are, are going to get stomped. I don't think that happens very often in the McVay era. But I just don't know if they have enough horsepower right now to beat that team in their own backyard. I think that I think that the Lions win it by a field goal or less. Yeah, you know, FanDuel has it at three and a half right now for the Lions. Last year's game finished 24-23. I, I, I see a 23-21. I see the Rams yeah. sticking around. Like you said, Stafford making plays in that building, a building that he was beloved in for years, you know, 10 plus years. And I I, I do think the Lions will win. But I do, like I said before, I, I see some stretches where uh, there's just rust offensively yeah. and trying to get this thing going. But, um, you know, keep an eye, too, on Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery. I think those guys are really good. And and if they can run the football, keep Stafford and that McVay offense off the field, I, I like the Lions as well. Uh, Travis, great to see you, my friend. Thanks for uh, doing this as always. And best of luck after week one. I was going to say, maybe we'll see each other in the playoffs all over yes. again. We'll, 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 we'll start the season and maybe for one of us, we'll <laughs> end the season at the, uh, together all over again. Travis Rogers locked on Rams. Check him out. Me, Matt Derry locked on Lions. It's been our Thursday crossover brought to you by prize picks Friday shows coming up tomorrow.